on the field. Depending on what these leads are, I think it'll be a good indication of this is what I've learned from this matchup. And right away, we see that Amoongus next to the Terrapagos. That's a really sort of unique combination. Definitely something that Nick has learned from playing Z yesterday. Well, it's, it's nice to see that, though, because I think you can just go ahead and start getting getting things going. You also maybe pressure down this Calyrex a little bit more. Oh, this Calyrex sure. is going to be Terra Grass with a clear amulet. Uh, so even though we do have no Incineroar on the other side, you're still thinking about, like, how can I actually kind of deal with this Calyrex? For sure. And it really, sending the Amoongus out turn number one puts a lot of pressure down on that Calyrex after this initial turn of fake out to uh, terastalize into that grass type so you don't get put to sleep. You can't necessarily set up Trick Room because Amoongus, if it's a, a very slow speed, could potentially uh, take a uh, Glacial Lance from that Calyrex and then return a Spore and just put that Pokemon to sleep. There's a lot of things in play in this turn number one. I'm pretty sure we'll see Incineroar go for a fake out, but I'm curious to see how Z is going to set themselves up for this next turn, as Nick already swapping out the Terrapagos into our Shifu. Well, the Terrapagos just isn't in a good spot right now. There's not really much that they can actually do, I think, against this lead, but there's also going to be a Protect on both sides. So what's really nice about the Amoongus lead here is thinking that maybe this Ice Rider Calyrex could go for Trick Room, and you just have the opportunity here to be able to have an Amoongus in with that speed control going up for Z. This pivot, though, when you do see the Incineroar leave the field here, it's nice to actually be able to kind of hit that maybe into the Urshifu, but it doesn't feel as great knowing that the Urshifu could just go for something like the Surging Strikes and completely deny the attack drop. Agreed. Raging Bolt on the field, though, will make it a little bit more difficult for that Urshifu to go straight for that attack, as you do have to worry about the threat of a Thunderclap or a Thunderbolt into that slot. The Urshifu on Nick's side of the field is holding Mystic Water, so while it does have access to detect and could try and feel out Z's play for this next turn, it's still going to have to worry about that Raging Bolt because at the end of the day, the Amoongus can only put one Pokemon to sleep and it's a tough pick here. I mean, Calyrex is going to threaten a lot of damage on the field. That Raging Bolt's going to threaten a lot of damage as well. Yeah, but Rage Router is one way to get around that. So if you're worried about something like the Thunderclap, you can at least keep this Urshifu safe for a little while. Surging Strike's not going to do that much with each individual hit, but it's added up to about 40% damage here onto this Ice Rider Calyrex, which is just going to help soften it up for later. Thunderbolt 2, you can see how that Rage Powder is really influential to make sure that that Amoongus is going to take that hit instead. But with the Glacial Lance in response, that is going to be a KO onto the Amoongus. So a big chilling nade boost now. For sure. So now Calyrex will be up one attack point. There is no redirection on the field now for Nick either, which does mean that Thunderclap is going to threaten big damage into this Urshifu. Seeing Terrapagos return, I think, is a great call by Nick. You could potentially try and swap in the Chi Yu for the Urshifu if you want to get as much damage out of this Pokemon as possible. But I think if I were Nick, I would be very tempted right now to terrestrialize that Urshifu just so that you could get through the potential Thunderclap and then return a close combat or another big hit onto that Calyrex to lock in a KO. Yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward because Terrapagos is that one Pokemon that it feels like you have to invest the Stellar Terra into. Yes. Especially because you want to make sure that you are going to be getting off increased damage with something like the Terra Star Storm. It does become a spread move in that in that case. Um, so I think you can't really afford to use that terrestrialization on something like the Urshifu. So instead, we are going to see the other option you talked about, the Chiyu leaving coming onto the field, the Beads of Ruin activating, and then we get a chance to see this Terrapagos and what it is made of. But Z is going to return the Ice Rider Calyrex, the Incineroar now coming out instead. I like this play from Z, honestly. Yes, the attack boost is nice, but at the end of the day, you really want to give yourself positioning, and I think if you were to leave that Calyrex Ice Rider on the field, 
it's just an easy target for this attack. I, I do agree with what you said about wanting to preserve the terrestrialization for this Terrapagos, as you see here. I think the big question for me, though, is whether or not we're going to see a matching terrestrialization from Z this turn. Since we didn't, while this is spread damage, it's not going to be super effective against either of these Pokemon, and they are on the bulkier side, even with the Beads of Ruin ability activated. Yeah, I, I mean, you're still taking a huge chunk of damage with the Terrapagos because you did change the ability away from that Terra Shell, but you're still one of the faster Pokemon on the field. So it's kind of nice to know that you could just go for another Terra Star Storm. The problem, though, is your choice specs. Terrapagos does not have the opportunity to protect here. No, it does not. And that does make it an easier target for Thunderclap. I think that's one of the toughest decisions that Raging Bolt players have to consider when they're in this kind of position. Yes, the Terrapagos is locked into an attack, but Nick could always decide to switch it out here if it wants to, if Nick wants to try and preserve it for later on in the game. And you do have to play this guessing game. Will my opponent try to go for that Thunderclap? Will they just go for another Thunderbolt? I think here, looking at the damage that Thunderbolt put out earlier, especially with Chi Yu's support, Maybe if you switch the Chiyu out on the field, you can take the Thunderclap, but I think this is going to be really close. There's a Terrestrialization. Interesting. Zia's found an opportunity to go for the Terra, and it's going to be onto the Raging Bolt. So Raging Bolt's going to get the Terra Electric. That's going to help boost up some of its Electric-type attacks. Does make it a little bit more vulnerable to that Terra Star Storm, but if Z clicks that Thunderclap, it's going to be able to get the knockout here with the Terra, I assume. Let's it, find out. Let's find out. Definitely <laughs> enough there to just ensure that the Terrapagos is going to go down for the count. The figure was nice too, just to ensure that you're going to be able to stop the partner from going for anything. And because it was the Chiyu, had the Focus Sash. So you would have broken that as well. Yeah, it was great coverage because I think at the end of the day, Z was trying to figure out which Pokemon Nick was going to switch out because I think it was very likely that there was going to be a switch that turn. And you're just covering your options. If the Terrapago switches out and you fake out the Chiyu, then you're not taking damage that turn. You can adjust in this next turn. If the Chiyu is the one that switches out, you get a little bit of chip damage down on better Shifu. And I think more importantly, you lock in the KO on the Terrapagos. So overall, just a very safe play from Z and has positioned them very well for this end game. Urshifu can detect this turn, so I don't think you can confidently click Thunderclap again this time around. But with the Pokemon advantage, really, as long as you're able to find an opportunity to get one KO coming up, I think you're going to be in a good spot. Uh, that was nice, though. Did you see that? Thunderclap yes. found the Raging Bolt into the Urshifu and didn't actually go for an attack. This Urshifu does get access to Taunt, so it's going to have the ability here to go for the Taunt into the Incineroar after Chiyu has confirmed the KO onto the Raging Bolt. So just like that, we are going to see a Pokemon knockout, but it still might not be enough for Nick to be able to get through this. It depends on just how Z is going to navigate this. There's still the Ice Rider Calyrex in the back, but it did take the Surging Strikes earlier. This Chiyu is going to be putting on quite a bit of pressure. The Taunt here now also forces Z into the position where you have to manually switch out this Incineroar if you want to get it back in since that parting shot got shot down. It really depends on what Z's final Pokemon is at the end of the day. We haven't seen it revealed yet. If it's something like the Amoongus, a more passive Pokemon, I think that's going to be a really tough spot for Z to get back from. But if it is a Pokemon like that Pelipper, yes, the rain on the field will be boosting the damage that the Urshifu does at the end of the day, but it will also weaken the fire-type damage that the Chi Yu is threatening. Well, it's the Pelipper. It is. The so Pelipper is nice to have here because it's going to be doing a bit more damage, but you also just boosted this Urshifu. It Exactly. So it's going to be a tough flight for this Pelipper to make it through this end game. I, I do think that Z has the option here to try to go for the manual switch to get that Incineroar back on the field later to have a fake out. And then you just hope that your Pelipper can hang on for one attack. Either a Hurricane or a Weather Ball here would be so Ooh. critical. Well, Chiyu has to go for the overheat. This is one thing that the Pelipper is really good for in this situation, is that you're forcing this Chiyu to have to go for a bit more powerful of a move because it only has fire type attacks. The other attack that it has is Snarl, yep. and that's not going to be super beneficial here. So the fact that the overheat hit allowed this Pelipper to be in range of the knockout with the surging strikes. So all of a sudden we are down to the final two Pokemon for both of these trainers as the Pelipper goes down. The knockoff here not going to be too effective in terms of damage but that Focus Sash is 
broke broke oh, it's, it's gone it's actually gone. it just fell off yeah no it, it's gone i mean <laughs> it fell our, off it, it could have been uh <laughs> It was broken and it's gone, but unfortunately now with Calyrex back on the field, Urshifu and this Chiyu are going to be faster. There's the rain boost and Urshifu is still holding on to the Mystic Water item as well. So we saw how much damage Surging Strikes did last time around. Yep. Snarl's going to be super effective on Calyrex. I don't think Calyrex can survive this upcoming attack. No, amazing. Like, Nick found the, the spot. Yeah. We were thinking about what could possibly be in the back that might be able to change things. And there was nothing that could stop the positional advantage that Nick was able to get. This Ice Rider Calyrex took so much damage on the first couple of turns that it was much easier to be able to take down now. And the speed, not being able to get the Trick Room up, left that Ice Rider Calyrex so vulnerable. So Incineroar does go for the knockoff into the Urshifu that Mystic Water is gone, but the damage has been done. And Nick is going to walk away with the win. Very smart play. If you were expecting to have the Mystic Water Rapid Strike or Shifu <laughs> on the other side, of course. It doesn't really feel super good to know that you might be being giving over a boost to your opponent. But it's going to be a pretty big switch up here for both players. Z is going to have the Urshifu Rapid Strike of their own alongside that Ice Rider Calyrex. And Nick is going to lead with a very offensive lead himself, the Terrapagos next to the Chiyu. Yeah, Z making a great call in this game number one. If you think about it, last game we saw the Amoongus next to the Terrapagos. If we had seen that again with the Urshifu lead on their side of the field, that would have been a very tough start once more. But sending out the Urshifu with the Chiyu next to the Terrapagos really changes this format. Urshifu can hit both these Pokemon for good damage. This is a really tough spot, though, for Z, because you're really tempted right now to just go for the Surging Strikes into the Chiyu, just knock it out, because you are not sure that this Terrapagos might Terrastalize. You can't really afford to just hit into it with the Surging Strikes just to be able to deal with the ability. So you just go for the gold here, want to get some damage down into the Urshifu, but there was that risk that if the Amoongus with Rocky Helmet had switched in there, you are taking a lot of damage. So a little nice to be able to get that right. Nick as well, though, making sure that it's not going to take too much either. Terra Star Storm is going to be single target damage right now, though. So into the Calyrex, you do have um, even more damage, but because you didn't break the Terra Shell, it's not going to be very effective, and look at how little the Glacial Lance is going to do to either of these Pokemon. Good cover from Z there to make sure that they were not going to be doing too much damage yeah. into the Amoongus, but also, yeah, vice yeah, versa. Yeah, it's good coverage for sure. Unfortunately for Z, I think the Calyrex now is at the point where it's going to be pretty ineffective for the rest of the match. You know, just seeing how much that Terra Star Storm did before Terrastalization, seeing how much Surging Strikes did last game, Calyrex Ice Rider just is not able to find its stride in this matchup just yet. And I think the best thing Z can do in this position is just let it get knocked out this turn and then use this opportunity to send in a Pokemon undamaged for the following turn. Oh, it's so, it's so bulky. <laughs> Trapagos is not taking very much from the Urshifu, but keep in mind that it is going to be the Choice Scarf variant. So it's still not going to hit as hard as what we're seeing from Nyx. And so with those, those Rapid strikes. That is a Calyrex rapidly going down. And it comes down to maybe what else Z has in the back. But it's kind of a similar story. Maybe why Z was not comfortable having to take this matchup into Nick is that it's too, it's really difficult to get the trick room going for your Calyrex. And you also don't really have a great way to deal with this Terrapagos. That is a double KO for Nick on this turn. No, I think a lot of trainers who are running the Calyrex Ice Rider with Urshifu, especially with the Choice Scarf, really want to find a way to get their Urshifu to comfortably lock into close combat so you can at least be dealing, you know, big damage to the Terrapagos at the end of the day. Unfortunately, though, with the lead that we saw from Nick, with that Chiyu in particular, I don't think you can risk locking into close combat because it's a single hit move. And Chiyu only had that focus sash. You want to, if you catch your opponent off guard, you want to be able to secure that knockout before an overheat potentially one shots your Calyrex. So the way this game unfolded just, you know, Urshifu had to make a decision. Unfortunately, it was just not the optimal decision for the Terrapagos making an early appearance. Ooh. And Nick has been able to really capitalize on that momentum. I mean, the fake out into the Urshifu too. What a great detect. To ensure that the Urshifu would stay safe. Oh. Terrapagos doesn't go down to the weather ball either. So a Terra Star Storm able to land into both the Incineroar and the Pelipper. 
And that is just devastating as the Pelipper gets brought down to its focus sash from that one hit. This Pelipper is able to hang on, but unfortunately is going to be slower than the Urshifu on the opposing side of the field. And really from there, it was just a couple more turns of damage for Nick to take that win.